Next up is Eric Michaels over. He is the um, second most handsome Ruby programmer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is going to talk to us about GUI programming with McRuby. <laughs> GUI programming is a sticky situation, so I hope that he provides some clarity. And now, Eric. Okay. GUI programming with Matt Ruby. Hey, everybody. Hello. Um, so, uh, my mother is a, a journalist, and uh, when I was very young, she instilled in me this idea that there's only a handful of words in the English language that you can use to ask a question. And if you answer all those, then there's no questions left to, uh, to be answered. So. Um, I'm basically going to, going to run through all these points on MacRuby, and uh, if there's any questions at the end, I'll just take that as a personal affront to my mother. Um, <laughs> uh, these are the only questions. Uh, so first, who? Uh, who the fuck am I? Um, this is my given name, but uh, you might know me on the internet as SF Eric, um, Twitter, GitHub, Gmail, IRC, etc. And I'm currently in the middle of a one-year fellowship at a nonprofit organization called Code for America. Uh, yeah, so Code for America. We're working to make government more efficient and transparent and open. Um, it's basically the best thing ever. Uh, I get paid to write open source software all day in Ruby. Um, and you can too. Uh, we just opened up uh, uh, applications for our 2012 fellowship. So if um, if anyone's interested in that, come up and talk to me at some point during the conference, and uh, I can give you more information and give you a t-shirt as well. We have great t-shirts. Love you guys. Um, so I also uh, write a lot of open source code, um, not necessarily related to fixing government. Um, you probably use at least one line of code that I've written at some point, so you're welcome. <laughs> And uh, I'm, right now I'm actually, so uh, just to be clear, I'm, I'm not a Mac Ruby expert. Um, I've never submitted a patch to, to Mac Ruby. I'm not on the core team. Um, but I am currently developing a Mac Ruby app uh, called Hubcap. And basically it's a social GitHub client. So think like a third party Twitter desktop client, but it's just for your friends who write code. Um, so you can keep up to tabs, keep tabs with them. Um, and see what code they're writing. Um, so these are the real heroes um, for MacRuby. You should follow them. And uh, there's also the, the last thing on the list is the, the MacRuby Devel mailing list, which is really active and great. Um, great place to start if you're, if you're interested in diving in and getting questions answered. So that's the who. Um, now the what. What is MacRuby? So MacRuby is a few things. Um, but first and foremost, it's a complete implementation of Ruby 1.9. So um, you can think sort of just like JRuby, except uh, instead of running on the, the Java uh, virtual machine, it runs right on top of Mac OS core technologies. So um, it runs on the Objective-C runtime, uses the Objective-C garbage collector, which turns out to be um, vastly superior than, than uh, the Ruby garbage collector, even in Ruby 1.9. Um, primarily because it's multi-threaded, and so garbage collection can happen on a separate background th thread, so it never is interfering with your, um, uh, with your, with your main thread, and uh, there's no global interpreter block uh, in Objective-C. So um, it, it has great performance, just like uh, in the same way that JRuby has great performance. Um, it also uses uh, LLVM, which is Apple's, it's not really a VM in the same way that the JVM is a VM. Um, it's more like a compiler infrastructure, but uh, it, it uses that to uh, compile code into Objective-C uh, bytecode, and there's both a JIT, uh, just-in-time compilation process. You can use IRB the same way you do now, and uh, it'll work great. And there's also a ahead-of-time compilation um, process, so you can bundle your applications and ship them out uh, as packages. Um, so yeah, so this is sort of the, the diagram. This is what it looks like. All Ruby apps 
should run in the MacRuby interpreter. Not everything that you write for MacRuby will run in every other Ruby interpreter. Um, and I just want to give like a really quick, this is going to be like the most simplistic demo. Um, and it's not getting into any of the GUI features at all, but it's just sort of proving that, um, that uh, MacRuby is what I say it is, a real Ruby. So let's see. Yeah, this is really hard to see. Can you guys see that? Uh, I'm trying to get Cinch to work, but that's probably useless. Okay. Let's make that bigger. Let's make another one. So, um, demos are always fun to watch people set up, right? It's great. This is the best part. Uh, okay, can everyone see that? Those are basically side by side and similar size and big enough font and everything. Yes. Um, So I'm, I'm using RVM, and on this side is 192, um, and on this side I'll make it MacRuby. So this is the latest version of MacRuby, 0 0.10, and I'm just going to open up uh, IRB in both of these. So uh, looks about the same, and if you have a string, uh, in Ruby 1.9, and you have a string in Map Ruby. They're totally the same, uh, exactly the same. Okay, great. And if I ask for that string's class in 1.9, anyone want to venture a guess as to what it's going to say? String. Great. And uh, anyone have an idea what it's going to say on this side? In a string. In a string. Uh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that actually changed, I think, between um, MacRuby 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. Um, it's actually going to say string. So I just blew your mind, I know. Um, but uh, what, what do you think is going to happen if I say MacRuby.class.superclass on this side? Object. Correct. Object. Good. And any, any guesses for this side? A uh, couple of, so some people said NS object, some people said NS string. You're both wrong. <laughs> Correct. Somebody knows their stuff. Uh, it's an NS mutable string. So um, the superclass of a Ruby string in Mac Ruby is an NS mutable string. Anyone know if I super one more time what I'm going to get? Correct. So you get an NS string. And if I go up one more time? Great. Um, so uh, everything is an object, or everything is an NS object, as the case may be. But um, basically, anything you can do in, in Ruby, you can do in MapRuby. Um, so let's say I want to capitalize that string. So I can say uh, foo.upcase. That's in the right word. OK, foo.upcase. And over here, I can do the same thing, right? So I can say foo, upcase. And I get a big oof. But my fingers just do what they want to do. Uh, you get capitalized too. So that's cool. And if I want to see what methods are on string in Ruby 1.9, I can just say foo.methods. Right? And uh, you're going to see almost exactly the same list. It's not 100% identical, but it's basically the same list here. I can sort them to make it so you can actually do like the one to one comparison. So it looks like there's a few more, like there's, uh, there's this like rational thing that's going on uh, on the MacRuby side, but they're basically the same. In theory, they're the, they're the same. But what's really cool in MacRuby is you can do this, right? So I can say, 
um, methods true, true. And the first true, I can do one true on this side, right? So uh, so if I say true there, uh, does anyone know what that does? Yeah, it's going to do the same thing. Uh, the, the, it's a, a Boolean that says include all the um, methods that are in, in all the superclasses as well. And so by default, that's true. Um, so you're going to get the same number of methods. Right. So it's that. And uh, if I do it with, uh, sorry, it's really hard to see from this angle. Um, so yeah, if I say false, then um, there's nothing. If I say true here, I get the same methods. But if I say true, true, if I give it the second thing, which you can't do on this side, right? If I do this, it'll say wrong number of arguments. But if I do this over here, what it'll do is it'll give me all of the, the Ruby methods that you can call on string. It'll also give me all of the um, Objective-C methods that you can call on an NS string. So um, if I say uh, methods.size for uh, foo, it's going to give me 168. If I say methods true, true, size, it's going to give me a lot more. Okay? And let's just take a look at some of those and see what they are. So they're these ugly, um, these ugly objective C things. But what's cool is that you can actually call them, right? So just like I can say, uh, foo dot upcase, I can say foo dot uppercase string because Objective C is all about being concise, um, and it does the same thing. It totally works, right? You can invoke methods in the normal Ruby method invocation way, um, and so uh, that might not seem awesome, but it's awesome <laughs> because you have all the power of Ruby. You can call any Ruby method, and you can also um, you can also call any Objective-C method, and you can mix and match, right? So you can have classes that inherit from NS object or NS mutable uh, string or anything like that, and uh, extend those using Ruby. So I think that's really cool. Um, but that's not really the fun stuff. The fun stuff is GUI programming, which is what this talk is all about. So if I can figure out how to resume the damn thing, then... <laughs> What's the keyboard shortcut to just, oh, there we go. Is that playing? OK, great. You hit H, it goes to your desktop, and then you just ran tab back to it. OK, thank you. Um, th this is probably all complicated by the fact that I'm running the line developer preview, which um, I'm not allowed to say anything about. But um, <laughs> you, can, you can take from that what you will. OK, uh, great. So. Um, so Matt Ruby, in addition to being a complete implementation of Ruby 1.9, uh, also lets you do two other things. So one is you can write scripts to control existing GUI applications. So if you want to write some script that updates your status in iChat, or you know, that does anything really. Like you can basically use it in the same way that you use Automator for the Mac, but with the full power of a real programming language like Ruby. Um, and then you can also create new GUI applications, right? So um, that seems like an exciting thing that you might want to do. But uh, why should you care, right? Like, uh, there's already a language that exists to script Mac applications. Um, it's called AppleScript. And there's already a language for creating new, new Ruby app, uh, or new Mac desktop applications called Objective-C, right? So what do you need Ruby for? Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a secret. Um, I need everyone just to, to lean in, because uh, I can't say it on the mic. Listen, listen carefully and lean in. The secret about Apple, but real, real juicy. So here's the secret. Apple's not very good at making programming languages. <laughs> um, who is good at making programming languages? Um, I think this guy is. Um, so, so you know, why why do I say that? What's uh, you know what what's not so good about AppleScript? Well, uh, AppleScript is really a toy language, right? It's uh, it's not object oriented. Um, 
doesn't have blocks, doesn't have most of the, the night doesn't have regular expressions, it doesn't have most of the features you'd want in a real programming language. Um, and sort of the things you just take for granted in Ruby. So I think it's pretty fair to say that, you know, given given equal uh, ability, you know, if you had to choose fairly between uh, Apple Script and uh, and writing an application in Ruby with MacRuby, you would choose MacRuby. Um, MacRuby has a great scripting bridge framework, um, so you can use that to really easily hook into any application and uh, and write scripts to your heart's desire. But uh, maybe you're thinking, you know, I don't really care about writing scripts for other people's GUI applications. I want to I want to create my own, um, and for that, uh, Apple has a language for, for you called Objective-C. And Objective-C is not a toy language. Uh, how can you tell that it's not a toy language? Uh, you look at the name, and you see that it has the word C in it. Um, and so you say, okay, this must be a very robust, powerful language, uh, because it's C. And uh, that's, that's mostly true. Um, that's mostly true, but I think I would sort of make the case that it's more hampered by, by being constrained by the um, syntax of C than um, it gives you, it doesn't really give you any additional power. And what's nice is that because MapRuby uses the LLVM and compiles your applications down into Objective-C bytecode, you can get all the performance of benefits of Objective-C, the power of C, um, but you don't actually have to write C code and, and deal with C. So I'm, I'm just going to try to make the case that uh, that Ruby is better than Objective C. Uh, it's just a, a nicer language. So um, let's just look at method invocation. So this is how you invoke a method in Ruby. Should look familiar to everyone in this room. Um, can anyone like suggest how how you can make this simpler? This is a real question. Any any ideas? What? So you could get rid of the dot. Someone, someone said get rid of the dot. But then how would you know that? You put a colon after method. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you could get rid of the dot, but you need some other syntax, right? So because otherwise, you wouldn't, if you got rid of the dot, then you wouldn't know that object wasn't a method that had two parameters. Or I guess you would, because there wouldn't be a comma between them. But uh, uh, it would be hard to parse like what, what those three things were without the dot, right? I mean. Um, I'd be, I'd be interested to see the, the parser that would be able to parse um, parse this as object method param without the dot. Not saying it's not possible, but um, yeah, that's true. Getting rid of the dot would make it simpler. Any other suggestions to make it simpler? Okay. Um, so this is how you do method invocation in Objective-C. And I think this is kind of gross, but um, you know, Maybe it's not so bad. Can anyone think of a way to make this simpler? Use parentheses and get rid of the dot for the colon. Lose the square bracket. Okay, so uh, lose, the lose the semicolon. Okay, yeah, you could get rid of the semicolon. I agree. Um, and uh, I, I would say basically you could make it look like the Ruby version, right? Um, if you wanted to make it simpler, you could you could basically do that. So, um, but you can't do that because Apple was bound by C syntax, and so. Um, everything that that's uh, every every all Objective C code ultimately gets compiled by GCC. It has to be syntactically valid C, um, and so so they made it look like this. So this isn't so bad, right? Maybe you say oh, I could live with this. It takes a little adjusting to. I got to remember to put semicolons at the end, but no big deal. So that's fine. Let's um. This is sort of Exhibit B. So this is Ruby again. It, the title's wrong. <laughs> Um, this is Ruby, right? Should look familiar. And this is how you initialize and sign an array from Ruby. Uh, suggestions on how to make it simpler? Crick, cricket. Pretty simple, right? Hard to imagine. Too much simpler. This is how you do the exact same thing in Objective-C. Um, so, you know, I like if if you are okay with doing this, then Objective C is the language for you. Um, but I think if, if you're a Ruby developer and you want to like like for me personally, the thing that got me into to Mac Ruby in the first place was I basically have been spending my whole life writing shell scripts, things that work on the command line, uh, you know, maybe web services and, and things that have an interface 
in, in HTML and, and CSS, but uh, the idea of, of being able to code in a language like Ruby and generate something beautiful like a, a desktop application um, seemed out of reach because you, you had to do a lot of stuff like this uh, before MacRuby. And to me, MacRuby was the thing that sort of gave me that, that entryway um, into GUI development. Uh, <laughs> great, so somebody said, yeah, don't forget you have to release that too, right? You're doing an alloc in there, um, and, and you have to release that. Although, uh, it's garbage collected, so uh, you, there's, yeah, like you, you may or may not have to release that, but you have to sort of worry about it, so, um, yeah, good point. Uh, so Ruby Coco is Apple's first attempt at supporting Ruby. Um, so they built this bridge, they built this Ruby to Objective-C bridge. And um, you can make an application that looks like this. Uh, this is the implementation of that little program in, uh, in MapRuby. And it's using a really nice DSL written by Rich Kilmer uh, called Hot Coco. And uh, again, I would sort of challenge people in the audience to say, you know, if you, if you want to make something that looks like this, right? These are, this is what you want to produce. You know, give, give me a simpler, give me a suggestion on a, a simpler way to produce that than, than this uh, Ruby DSL. Any ideas? I mean, you should send them to Rich if you think of any, because it would make them better. But I think this is really simple. I think this is really nice. Um, we can just like go through the code line by line. But uh, basically, you're saying make a new application, right? And then you say uh, make a window, and you can give it some attributes. We're giving it size. And then make a button. So you have a title, right? So that's going to be the text that's on the button. And uh, call that thing B. And then when you do the action on B, the action for a button is pressing it. We're going to put the world, the word world. Okay. So we're just defining that there. And then we attach B, the button, to win the window. That seems really simple and nice to me. I really like hot cocoa just for doing like really simple apps, it's great. So uh, this, is, this is the same version in Ruby Cocoa, which was Apple's sort of first attempt at uh, <coughs> allowing you to bridge Mac, to, to write Ruby code for desktop development. This is the exact same app, right? So this is this. Is this in Hot Cocoa. So, um, you know, sorry, Ruby Cocoa. Um, so Ruby Cocoa is a shitty language. Even Apple thinks it's a shitty language. They're not working on it anymore. Um, and they're actually investing a lot into, uh, into Mac Ruby development. They're paying developers full time to work on it and, uh, and putting a lot of support behind it. So Apple finally, maybe, will be in the, the, uh, the class of companies that make great programming languages, right? Um, but uh, there's other ways, right? Like if you want to write a, a client for the Mac, a lot of different ways to do that, right? So. Um, that you don't have to use uh, Objective-C at all, right? You can use Java. Um, in a room full of Rubyists, I'm not going to spend a lot of time convincing you not to write uh, Java apps for desktop clients. Um, I think you guys sort of know, uh, <laughs> have probably been, been seen that movie, have been down that path before. So the problem with Java is that you write the code once, runs anywhere, right? And they were able to deliver that promise, but there was always something that seemed a little bit wrong about uh, Java client apps, right? There was always something that, that was not quite right about them. You couldn't maybe put your finger on it, but just something seemed wrong. So uh, you don't get that in Mac Ruby, right? Mac Ruby apps look and feel exactly the same as apps written in Objective-C because they are native Cocoa applications, right? They sort of showed earlier in the, the demo on the command line, Mac Ruby objects are Objective C objects, um, and they use core foundation um, and and other line, like other core underlying uh, Apple like Objective C frameworks and uh, services. And so, um, yeah, don't write Java apps. Um, Java wasn't the solution to write once, run anywhere, right? Uh, the solution to that was the web. And so maybe you're thinking like, okay, I could use one of these fancy 
um, these fancy new JavaScript frameworks for, for doing like these rich, rich apps in JavaScript. And I'm not going to tell you uh, not to write web apps. You can do that, but um, I, I write web apps all the time. Web apps are awesome. Um, but not all apps have to be web apps, and there's certain things you can't do in web apps, right? So uh, I have like a Bluetooth device. If I want to write a Mac app that communicates with my Bluetooth device, you know, if, if anyone knows how to do that in a web app, I'd be interested to hear it. Um, but there's just certain APIs and certain capabilities that are, that are uh, offered to you in Mac OS X's APIs that just aren't in uh, web APIs, right? Okay, so that's sort of the what. Uh, the when, this is exciting. So just yesterday, Mac Ruby 0 0.10 was released. Um, it's a great release, it's stable. Uh, 1.0 is coming really soon. Features have basically been frozen. So the core team has said they're, they're not really working on any new features before 1.0. Um, they're just polishing up the APIs. They're going to do maybe a couple small releases um, just to improve stability and performance uh, leading up to a 1.0 uh, target. So that's awesome. And uh, Mac Ruby, whatever version of it is, is uh, the latest at the time, presumably, uh, hopefully 1.0, uh, will be included in Mac OS X. It's already included in the developer previews. Um, the only problem with this is that currently it's a private framework, right? So if you want to use MacRuby in your app, you have to bundle all of MacRuby into your app. You can't just assume it's there in the operating system. If Lion made this a public framework, then you would be able to assume it was there at least for Lion. So that would be great, and um, there's a lot of discussion in the mailing list trying to figure out how, um, you know, what, what sort of developers can do to convince Apple to make it a public framework. But basically, if you have to bundle uh, MacRuby with your application, you start off with a 50 megabyte footprint of your application before you write a single line of code, just for bundling MacRuby. So uh, if it was a, a, a public framework and you could assume it was there, then every, uh, every MacRuby application would be 50 megs smaller. So that seems like a worthwhile thing to do. And uh, if you guys feel like advocating for that, uh, that would be great. Okay, so so why? Um, this is kind of the last the last question. Uh, why? So I think I already gave you some reasons why from like a programmer's perspective. I think hopefully I convinced you that the syntax is nice, and if you um, if you want to want to use it, then um, if you want to like build a GUI application, then Mac Ruby is a pretty good way to do that. Um, so here's, here's a number of reasons why, right? So one is you already know Ruby. If you're sitting in this room, there's a pretty good chance you, you know more Ruby than you do any of the other languages I, I mentioned as candidates for writing GUI desktop applications. So uh, that's a good start. Uh, number two, you can use any existing Ruby libraries, right? So Ruby libraries that you've already written, there's vast gems on rubygems.org, and you can use those in your Ruby application. Uh, the other thing is Mac Ruby is all 192, right? And especially if you're bundling the application, um, then you can you can just use like the cool new hash syntax in, in Ruby 1.9 and not have to worry about breaking anyone's code. So um, it's sort of nice. You can use all the nice syntactic features that are in the latest version of Ruby. Uh, as I mentioned er earlier, there's no global interpreter lock. Um, so it has the potential to, to be really fast for that reason. Uh, it also has a much better garbage collector than uh, even in the latest version of Ruby. Um, and because it, mo mostly because it's multi-threaded, right? Because it can run on a background thread and clean up memory without, uh, without uh, delaying any tasks in your main thread. So it's really fast. Um, here's some benchmarks. So uh, the, the x-axis is confusing. These, they're just a bunch of different benchmarks. And I couldn't figure out how to rotate them so that they'd be vertical, so you could actually read all of them. But each one of those bars is a different benchmark. And that yellow line across the middle, everything's sort of been, um, it's, it's relative to, to Ruby 1.9. So if you see, if for everything that's like a 4 or a 5 or a 6, that means it's six times faster at doing that benchmark than Ruby 1.9. So not everything is faster, right? There's certain things that are slower. But I think this makes it pretty clear that in the main, 
um, MapRuby actually outperforms uh, Ruby 1.9 for doing most sort of things that you do in, in benchmarks. Um, and that's true in practice. You're not, you're not taking a performance hit at all by writing your app in MapRuby. So, uh, and many times it's a performance game. I think a lot of people would be well served to run their existing um, non-Mac Ruby applications, right? Just any sort of Ruby application on Mac Ruby just because it's such a fast Ruby. Uh, same way that JRuby is fast Ruby. Uh, and then here's, here's another reason, right? So the Mac App Store is a huge new opportunity for Mac developers, right? Um, I think Pixelmator said they, they made a million dollars in the first 20 days of sales on the App Store. And so uh, that's an amazing statistic. And you think, oh, well, you know, maybe I should do an iPhone app, maybe I should do an iPad app. Those are much bigger markets. And that's true. More people have iPhones and iPads than have Macs. Maybe that's not true iPads, but it's going to be true really soon of iPads, right? Um, but that's offset by the fact that Mac users are willing to pay more for apps, right? And you can sort of do more with apps, like being limited to the screen real estate um, of, of a phone is an interesting design constraint, and people have made amazing iPhone apps and iPad apps. Um, but but there's certain, you know, I'm, I'm of the opinion that, like, I have an iPad, I love my iPad. Um, to me, it seems like something that I use in addition to my, my laptop or desktop computer, right? It's not a replacement for that, at least not yet. So um, there's a great opportunity to, to sort of cash in on this wave of apps, and there's also a lot less competition, right? So yeah, the app store for iPhone and iPad have been around with all these existing apps. There's a lot of competition. Uh, this is a great space where, you know, before there were all these barriers to writing, to writing uh, Mac desktop apps. Now those are sort of going, those barriers are going down, and the opportunity is increasing. So um, I think it's a great time to, uh, to do this. So how do you do it? How do you get started? Um, you can go to MacRuby.com and download it. If you're, uh, it, it's just a package, right? Like any other uh, Mac DMG or maybe it's a zip file. Um, but you just go through an installer and it works. Uh, if, you're, if you're running RVM, just make sure you have the latest version of RVM installed. And then um, just say RVM install MacRuby. And I would, I've been assured that there's a, 20 gig broadband uh, pipe. So if you all want to put that to the test now, um, <laughs> just type the two commands on your screen. Um, there are a couple uh, uh, dependencies that you'll need first. You may already have them. Uh, so one of them is LLVM, which you can install uh, either if you use Homebrew with Homebrew or with Mac ports like that. You can also build it from source um, if you're one of those people. And um, you also need Xcode tools, which you probably already have, but um, yeah, so uh, that's, uh, that's where you can get that if you don't have that. And uh, so like, what are some of the other resources you should know about if you want to get started, right? Download everything. What do you do next? Um, there's a great book that Matt Imanetti's working on now called Ruby the Definitive Guide. Um, it's an O'Reilly book, and he's writing it like live on the internet, so you can see um, every time he updates it, and it's totally free. So just go check it out. It's a, a really nice book. Like the first nine chapters are mostly fleshed out, and he's sort of filling it in and updating it as new releases of MacRuby come out. Um, but that'll presumably be published uh, pretty shortly after MacRuby 1.0 is uh, is live. Um, uh, yeah, there's uh, there's another book which you can get uh, early as well. So MacRuby in action um, hasn't been published yet, but you can pay the 20 bucks and get a PDF of it in whatever state it's currently in. Um, and it's a, another great book that I'd recommend as well. Um, and despite what I said about uh, Objective-C earlier, uh, no, like having a knowledge of Cocoa will help you, right? Because you can call any, any methods in Cocoa in Ruby, uh, in MacRuby. Um, having like a really fundamental understanding of what's happening under the hood helps. And this is an awesome book for understanding how Cocoa works. So I would, uh, I would highly recommend that. And, uh, if you have any feedback about the talk, feel free to send me an email or a tweet or something like that. And you can follow me on GitHub. Uh, if you don't have a computer, you can call me. My telephone number is 415-312-2382. Uh, that was a joke. Don't call me. If you have a computer. <laughs> um, and that's it. Uh, I think I have exactly like one minute for questions, so maybe one or two. Yes? I have two questions.
not mine era. Right. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll repeat the questions for those who couldn't hear it. Um, so the first question was, uh, the first question was, sorry. Gems I, with native right, right. So uh, what about gems that aren't compatible? So if gems aren't compatible, that's um, arguably a bug, right? Like even if there's native extensions, if there's C extensions, then um, in theory, MacRuby should be able to, to handle those. So um, that's that's like, uh, and I think like even in JRuby now, they're working on on solving that problem. So uh, like, if you find a gem that's that's not compatible with MacRuby, won't install. You should you should file that as a bug. And uh, yeah, I mean that's that's a bug, right? Like the diagram that I put up earlier with the circles should be true, right? Any any program that works in uh, MRI should work in MacRuby. And then uh, the second question was about the bundling. So uh, if you if uh, somebody doesn't have Lion, like let's say that Apple decides to make um, make MacRuby a public framework, so you can just say um, uh, you can basically just say in, uh, include or require Mac. Uh, uh, I'm not even sure how you actually would say it, but. They expose some interface, right, that says, like, you can include this and you, you have the whole stack so you don't have to bundle it. Um, what would you have to do on earlier releases of uh, Mac OS X? And the answer is, hopefully, they'll also, when they do that, release, um, like, point version updates to Snow Leopard or whatever. But if not, then you just have two separate uh, binaries, right? So you could distribute a package. For Lion, it would be a very lightweight package. It would be 50 megs smaller. And then for everything before Lion, or you could just say, we only support Lion, and it would break on, on anything before Lion. Um, great. I think I'm out of time. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, everybody.